Good evening, everybody. All right. Uh, we're going to start off tonight with kind of one of our canned sessions because we're getting a lot of uh, inquiries about the uh, uh, the options area, uh, especially the option spreads. So uh, we'll start off with that, and then we'll just go into our regular uh, uh, analysis of stocks and charts. We might not have as many requests at the end because some of you might be here until wee hours of the morning. We wouldn't want that. So uh, a lot of people uh, don't even know what a spread is. So make sure our charts are all right. So we're going to just go start from the basics and kind of zip up through of why spreads are much more advantageous to the trade than just buying calls or puts outright. So first of all, people say, well, what is a spread? And spread is basically a spread position is entered by buying and selling an equal number of options of the same class, meaning the same uh, uh, date. Um, and you're buying one at one price and selling another at another price. Um, Hedge your option that you sell with buy above and below. Okay. Uh, yes, and we're going to be working on debit spreads tonight. I'll I'll show when I go to credit spreads. So, anyways, you're basically buying one priced strike price, and I'm going to use the example that you'd be buying a 50 call and you'd be selling a 55 call against it, and that's so. Before we even put on a spread, the rhetorical question is, what is the most important uh, criteria for an option trade? And that is the direction of the move. Then we want to know the timeliness of the move. And then we can calculate or should be able to calculate uh, the magnitude of the move. So essentially, we're looking at situations where we might be in breakouts to have a price move or a J-hook pattern. And the benefit of our J-hook pattern is that we know wave one and wave three will be equal. So we can pretty much uh, uh, know what what spread to buy or what uh, calls to buy, what calls to sell based upon uh, uh, based upon different uh, uh, the different strike prices. Uh, calendar spread of different months. We're not even going to get to calendar spreads, uh, uh, Bob. We're not going to. We're going to make this as simple as possible. Uh, and though, yes, the spreads are called verticals. So when we're setting up for the spreads, we're trying to figure out what the price move might be. So if we know this is a wave one, wave two, and we're starting off in wave three, and that this was 14 points, we can pretty much calculate where our price move may go, and then the most important. Or the first most important element, obviously, is knowing the direction. And then we want to know the timeliness of the move. There's our doji, or yeah, doji gap up off a major moving average. So if we're in a J-hook pattern wave three, we now know what the magnitude of our move uh, might be. So number one is knowing those elements of your analysis of the uh, uh, the uh, price move, and then why is a spread versus a, uh, a straight call position more enticing? Because it's got much better bet math, and that's the other element, that when we're, when we're analyzing a price trend, what is the most important or what is the most feasible trade based upon the math? So if I'm doing a spread, I'm usually looking for my return to be somewhere between two and a half to three times minimum of what I've got as far as my money exposed. So that basically boils down to if I'm going to do a spread from a 50 to 55, five points, I don't want to be spending any more than $2 for that spread. Otherwise, your risk reward starts getting a little bit out of whack. Why isn't two to one better? 
because you got to remember you've got elements of a uh, an option trade that are working against you first of all you've got the bid ask spreads secondly you've got a little bit higher percentage commission based upon a smaller am dollar amount and third you have to have the price moving in the direction that you want it to uh, because if a price moves against you if you buy one minute and sell the next minute your bid ask spread is probably already going to knock you down three five fifteen twenty thirty uh, percent depending on what the spread is between the bid and the ask so basically you're always you're usually buying toward the uh, ask side and you're selling toward the bid side so that's one of the parameters that's working against you when you're when you're trading options the exercise price or the strike price is the uh, the uh, uh, price that you're buying that that piece of paper you're buying says I can buy this stock at this strike price whether it's $20 25 30 35 dollars uh, and strike prices were usually priced at five dollar increments lower priced ones were usually priced at two dollar and fifty cent in increments but now they've got options almost to any dollar amount the uh, one dollar amount and sometimes even down to the the 50 cent amount. Uh, I'm not ignoring any uh, uh, questions here. Let me zip through and then I'll come back and answer all the questions. Um, so anyways, uh, where are we? The expiration date is the date that that option expires which on a monthly basis is the third Friday of every month, which doesn't have an exact date to it because it all depends on where the month starts and how many Fridays are going to be uh, out there to get to the third Friday. We also have the advantage when we're doing spreads of time decay. And time, time decay is very simple. The further we are away, if this is expiration date and there's a stock trading at 50, and we're four weeks before expiration date, people might be willing to pay $3 for that, the option to buy that stock at 50, because essentially what they're doing is buying the time factor that in 30 days or 45 days, whatever the length is to expiration date, you've got a lot of opportunity for that stock price to go up and make money on that uh, for whatever you paid uh, on that. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, James. Uh, let me finish this illustration. Um, but the further we, the closer we get to expiration date, that if if the price never moves, the option price is going to keep decaying because there's less time for it to move big one way or the other. Same scenario on the put side. If you're buying puts with the expectation that this stock's going to go down, the closer we get to expiration, the less time there is for it to move down so that option price gets to the point where by the time you get to expiration if that stock never moved what what people were paying for uh, calls up here for three dollars eventually go to zero because nobody's going to pay you anything for uh, a piece of paper that says you can buy a, a stock for fifty dollars if you can go right to the market and buy it for fifty dollars uh, weekly options yes I'm sorry uh, James yes you you also have weekly options that expire every Friday. Um, these are debit spreads, yes. And I'll tell, show you when I, yes. Yeah, so if this, if you were buying this piece of paper that says we're buying XYZ that's trading day at 50, and we've got 30 days before expiration, and it looks like it's in an uptrend, we're willing to pay $3 because we think it's going to move at least $3 and then some to make a profit on our three dollar uh, uh, option price again as the further we keep moving this way the less time there is for that stock price to move up until it goes down to zero and basically yes you've lost even though that stock price hasn't moved you've lost three dollars for that the uh, what you paid uh, for that option uh, so the weekly options uh, yes they expire every Friday so um, and you can buy this week's option price. Uh, you can buy next week or the week after that. So um, 
there are a lot more opportunities now, or a lot more. Uh, uh, I don't want to say options with options. There are there are more. Uh, uh, yeah, more more options uh, situations that you can buy at this point. So um, that's why we want to take advantage of candlestick results. That's why uh, option spreads are beneficial because with candlestick analysis we do have a much more clear analysis of the direction of the move, the timeliness of the move, and the magnitude of the move. So here's the math on an option price. So if that a stock is trading at $50 and our target for let's say the next two weeks is $55 and now let's say in two weeks that's expiration date. If we were buying the dis and this happened to be when we were illustrating December calls, if we were buying uh, the calls, the 50 calls at two dollars and fifty cents and our our target was fifty five, that means if it went up to above fifty five dollars or it went up to uh, uh, our target at fifty five dollars, that means it would go to five dollars or our two fifty would now turn into five bucks or we made two dollars and fifty cents profit or a hundred percent gain. And our break even on that trade would be two dollars and fifty cents because that stock would have to go up to at least two from fifty to two fifty two fifty just to break even. Because if on expiration day it closed at fifty two fifty, that means that's all that option would be worth at that time. Uh, yeah, that could be uh, more opportunities to get more leverage. Let's put it that way. Um, all right, now, so if we use that same criteria for buying, oops, where did it go? Did I do two of these? If we did a spread, the stock is trading at fifty. Our target is fifty-five. Let's say we're buying the December 50 calls for $2.50, and we're selling the 55 calls for a dollar. So we took $2.50 out of our pocket to buy it, and then we sold the 55 calls, which meant we put a dollar back in our pocket. So we only had a net out of pocket of $1.50. Now, if it hits our target, that option is now worth or that spread is now worth five dollars because the the fifties are at, if the stock is at fifty five are now worth fifty and the fifty fives at fifty five are worth zero so the dollar you put in your pocket stays in your pocket and the calls that you bought for two fifty now go to five bucks so your profit on that trade if it goes to fifty five is three dollars and fifty cents. So now your gain, instead of being a hundred percent, now is two hundred and fifty percent. And did I put the break even on here? And the break even, instead of being two dollars and fifty cents, is now only a dollar fifty. So there's a few things that happen here for you. Number one, your percentage return is going to be much greater. Your break even is lower. And your money risk or exposed to that trade is much lower. So if it works, your percentage gain is, is much greater. If it doesn't work, your loss is going to be much smaller. If the stock goes to six or fifty six, that means now your fifty calls are worth six dollars and your 55 calls are worth a dollar. So when you sell your 55 uh, or your 50 calls, you're going to get $6 back in your pocket. But you have to buy back your 55s for a dollar. So you got the $6 in your pocket minus the dollar that you put out of pocket to get buy back. So your net is still $5. If the stock goes to 70, that means your 50s are now worth 20 that you're going to put in your pocket. Your 55s are worth 15 that you have to buy back. Your net is still $5. Anything over $55 is going to net you 
a five dollar uh, difference. So the advantage is if the stock uh, uh, gets to a much lower target, let's say 55, you've still got a 275 percent gain. Do you buy at the money or in the money? Again, Merrill, that makes that'll all be based upon the math. What what options make the most sense? If the stock goes to 48, the whole trade is worth zero because your 55s are worth zero, your uh, uh, 50s are worth zero, so you are out a dollar fifty. Now, had you bought the 55 or the 50s for 250 and it went to 48, it's worth zero. Or, I guess that'd be the case in both. Anything below fifty dollars, uh, your your money is going to be gone, or the whole trade is gone. But again, at this point, you only had a dollar fifty exposed. That if you bought the uh, options outright, you would have been you would have had two dollars and fifty cents. Uh, exposed, usually out of the money or at the money for the long. Yes, you're probably going to lean a little bit more toward at the money or out of the money, um, because the analysis in the first place was which direction was the underlying stock position that you were buying the spread. Which way do you think it's going to go based upon the candlestick charts? Uh, and it, yes, Joseph, it does lower your cost of being in that trade. Um, No one who does not understand spreads is going to understand this much less how to trade spreads from this webinar. Well, I guess that's true. Uh, um, okay. So anyways, yep, there's going to be people here that you, no matter how much you explain it, they're not going to get it. We're just trying to get to the people that want to see the details and see if they can understand it. So again, what is the most important criteria for a spread? The analysis of the chart. And the analysis is basically what is the market trend doing? Where is the market trend? Because we're more apt to be buying call spreads here than call spreads up here. Might up here be buying put spreads. So even though a spread might have the right math, where are you in the market condition? to say, well, should we be in a bullish situation? There's going to be good math on bullish spreads here, but it might not be the right time to be buying bullish spreads based upon what the market has been showing us, and it's in a, uh, uh, a choppy market situation. All right, I'm, I'm not ignoring any questions. I'm going to scan back through once I get everything done and see if I can clarify everything for you. So. If our trend expectation is that we're in an uptrend, yes, that's when we want to be buying. This is what we're looking for is our analysis of which way is the market going. So we also want to know what is the price history of the uh, what we're trading. Remember, there's a very simple uh, 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 analysis that the Japanese rice traders use, and that they say let the market tell you what the market is doing. So uh, when is a spread not viable? If we've got something that tells us that we might have a huge upside potential, we might be cutting off our nose in spite of our face by doing uh, doing a spread here. This might be the opportune time, especially if the market was turning around and we could see a fry pan bottom or a strong buy signal breakout. That might have huge upside potential, and if we do a spread, we're going to limit our gains. Remember, if we do a $5 spread, our maximum is going to be $5, where this might turn into a $40 uh, winner as far as a, a price move. So there are times, and that's what we try to do as far as our analysis of saying, what are the best uh, uh, option strategies for the chart that we're looking at? So. I know there's a lot of people that uh, are taught option strategies, and then they run around looking to see when they can put that strategy on, and that becomes their first criteria is let, let me put on the strategy versus 
what is the analysis of my chart to tell me what is the best strategy for that that price move? Let's see. Oh, so when is it time? When is there times when you don't want to do a spread? Let's say a stock is trading at 50. The target is 55. We're buying the December calls for two dollars, and we're selling the December 55s for 10 cents. So we're netting a dollar 90. We have to sit there and analyze, saying, is it worth 10 cents on the initial trade to ma maximize our profit for five dollars? That we could be in for two dollars with the potential that there is no upside uh, uh, limitation, that we're not locked in at five dollars, that we could go much higher. That 10 cents may not be worth, or is not worth, the risk reward of getting an extra 10 cents at the beginning and eliminating our possibility that that, that uh, stock could go much higher. Again, the analysis is what is the uh, what's been the price history that we can analyze on the charts and what is the logical potential tar target. So there's two pieces of time elements. One is timing. And that is when can we buy, when is the ultimate time to buy on some of our price patterns? Right at the breakout. That's telling us one of two things. Either we're going to have a nice strong move or it fizzles. And this comes back to that very simple analysis or simple uh, uh, application of cut your losses short and let your profits run. We want to be in situations where upside potential is huge, and then we can see whether that upside potential was negated. So if we had seen this kind of doji sandwich set up and it opened positive the next day, we knew we were in a good trade. If it closed back down here, back in this range, we close out the position because that told us that this was not breaking out. So we've got very good timing elements on uh, uh, on when to be buying, so that uh, or we could be selling calls or doing a, a, a bearish spread because of our knowledge of what happens. Where do they use the uh, uh, where do we start looking for a sell signal? when we're in the overbought condition and we see a gap up. That's when we can start uh, looking for uh, uh, going short or buying short uh, spreads. Where is the likely breakout area? It's usually right at the beginning of, in this case, a fry pan bottom. And I always use this one for illustration. Do we get huge moves like this on every trade? Definitely not. But it doesn't take, it, basically, we're put into positions where the probabilities are that we're going to be heading up, and the probabilities are higher that we're going to be in situations that create this type of move. And if we were buying calls right here, it doesn't take very many of these each year to make your uh, returns for, over, for the overall year extremely good. So the other element of time is how much time do we have to expiration? Now, if I'm doing a spread, I want to be within two or three weeks of expiration. And the reason for that is, let's see, when is the maximum pricing for your uh, spread actually result? It's on expiration day, because that means there's not going to be any premiums built into either one of, uh, uh, either one of those calls. So if I'm buying a call here and selling a call here, thinking that it's going to come back up and test this level, and then all of a sudden it moves like this, which call do you think is going to move faster than the other? It's probably the higher price one. So this one that I sold and this one I bought, as this price is expanding way before expiration date, this call up here is probably increasing much faster than this one down here, because which calls do people buy? They usually try to buy the closest to the money calls. Um, any way to enlarge the presentation? Oh, uh, Steve, if, I think if you go up to the top of your screen, there should be a little box with arrows pointing out. Uh, click on that. What is the time frame for a fry pan bottom? Fry pan bottom can be 
Oh, right behind bottom, there is no time frame. It's just witnessing that big, slow, rounding curve, waiting for it to come back up. Uh, on the weeklies, you can do the same things, Robert. The weeklies are a whole, whole different uh, function of timing. If you're real aggressive, the only reason I don't do weeklies is I don't have time to, uh, because I'm doing so many other things during the day, I don't have time to do the weeklies. But there's a lot of people in the uh, options trading room that uh, do the weekly charts. And because of the aspect of timing with candlesticks, you get some very good trades, very high leverage trades, because you're hitting things right at the time that's breaking out, and you're buying them on the weekly chart. So in a matter of two or three days, you, you can get some very big profits. Uh, let's see. How do you scan with the fry pan bottom? Uh, there are scans for it. Uh, and I think those scans now are out on Thinkorswim, TC and Net, uh, Metastock, Ninja Trader, Trade Station. They're, they're on quite a few of them. Um, Delta is the amount of option will gain in the value of every dollar move in the stock. Uh, true, but that's based upon historic results. If you're, and I'll get to that uh, next time I see it right pin bottom chart. So that's why expiration day is very important, how far away it is. Because if we're way too early, that's why I don't want to be buying spreads way too far in front of the uh, expiration date. Because if the price starts moving, you're not going to make any money. As a matter of fact, you're going to be losing money even though the spread's moving or the price is moving in the direction you want it to. Because for a while, the upper priced or the higher priced uh, calls are going to move probably a faster percentage than the lower priced ones. Um, uh, what Delta do you buy or sell on spread? I don't use Delta at all. And the reason for that, Joseph, is the candlestick patterns that we're identifying usually are situations where we know there's going to be a strong price move after, let's say, a fry pan bottom. And what's the characteristic of a fry pan bottom? Well, for the last two or three months, it may have just been so slow and lethargic that the delta on that uh, price is completely different than what the breakout move is. And I'll, I'll try to get to that here. Um, so time to expiration. So this is usually my trading strategy. If it's four weeks or greater, I'm usually buying straight uh, calls or puts. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to hold them for four weeks. I'm just going to be uh, trading straight calls or puts based upon the uh, uh, what the chart is telling me. If I'm getting within two to three weeks of expiration, that's when I'll start putting on debit spreads. And that means I'm buying for uh, $5 and, or the $50 and selling the 55s. And then in the final week, I will do the credit spreads, which aren't very profitable. But based upon candlestick charts and only having maybe four or five trading days left to expiration, you're putting money in your pocket immediately, and then they're expiring worthless. You're not putting a whole lot of money in your pocket, but you're putting a high percentage of those trades in your pocket, making for very good uh, uh, income. So here's a case, too, where if I'm buying based on this slow curve, um, we were selling puts for $2.30, and we we're getting not too many days away from expiration, and we know we're near a breakout. Well, when it breaks out, and there's our monthly expiration right here, we know that that $2.30 that we are putting in our pocket for puts uh, right here in an uptrending stock disappears, so we keep that $2.30. So uh, putting credit spread money in your pocket is also a function of how far away you are from the expiration date and which direction is the uh, current price moving. So there are going to be times when we want to be selling a put spread, meaning that's a long uh, position, selling a put spread, versus buying a call spread. And that all comes back down to one simple function. What is the math? Does the math make sense? Again, that comes back to what is the timeliness of the move. 
So if we're sitting in a situation like this uh, a while back on our AMBA trade, we could see, again, this is what the, uh, what is the market uh, telling us the market is doing based upon wave one, wave two, wave three. Our projection would be $52. So we might be buying the, uh, we uh, bought the uh, 45 and a halves and sold the 50s and a half for $1.60. If, if it goes, uh, this would go up to uh, five bucks if the stock goes to fifty dollars and fifty cents. The difference between the forty-five fifty and the fifty fifty. If we'd bought the uh, November calls forty-fives outright for two dollars and thirty cents, and the price goes to fifty-five fifty uh, or fifty, whatever, I don't know what that means. Uh, oh, the price would have to go up. Uh, to 52.70 just to break even. 42.70 just to break even. I don't know what the math is on that. Anyways, what it boils down to is doing the spreads, you get a heck of a lot more leverage than if you buy the calls outright, especially if your time frame is getting fairly short. So right now, we've been uh, advocating or I've been buying the, the calls on cyber. And so one of the strategies is if I can see that we're in a big fry pan bottom and we have the potential of breaking out for another move like this, that over the next week, meaning tomorrow and then next week to expiration, I've got the potential of moving up here to somewhere between the 65 and maybe the $70 area. So do I buy calls on this? Well, if my target is 65 or higher, Oh, where did I skip? Where did I skip that? Ah, ah I goofed up. Oh, I skipped one. All right. If I buy a spread, and this is uh, this is on Thinkorswim, very simple. When you click on buy, it says uh, single or vertical. If I click on vertical, and I want to buy ten calls of the uh, uh, April 2015 expiration, I buy the 60s, and at the same time I sell the 65s, it tells me my price is going to be $1.20. So what that means is if this stock, which we're anticipating, is heading in an uptrend, and could it easily get to 65 over the next uh, six, seven trading days? Definitely, on this, based on this chart pattern. So that means if I buy those, that spread for a dollar twenty, and it goes to five bucks because it went to sixty-five or higher, that means I made a three hundred and sixteen percent gain, and my break-even was at sixty-one twenty. On the other hand, if I bought the uh, calls outright at a dollar seventy-five, to make three hundred sixteen percent profit. The stock would have to go to 67.30, or my break even now is 61.75. Now that doesn't seem like a whole lot of difference, but percentage-wise, that makes a whole lot of difference. All right, so let me go back and see what questions, uh, or if I've missed your question, go ahead and type it in again. I'll start from right here. That way, um, is this a practice run? Ooh, I don't know. I'd say, anyway, what I'm supposed to be telling everybody tonight is we have this, uh, 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 the green flag uh, 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 trading program we got set up, which is basically this new options uh, program, the Pivotal Cash Bonanza, which is essentially using our techniques, and we've got professional traders setting up the uh, trades for everybody. So. We got uh, closed out last week uh, as far as people signing up for membership, but we've added a few more people, and we're going to open it up again, and probably just to, uh, instead of the whole list out there to basically members and at least people to come in on our web. So keep an eye open for uh, 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 opening up this one more time. But essentially, this is to help everybody 
take the techniques that we have for being on the right trades at the right time, and I've got a professional crew now that will put those trades on, the, the best trades for each one. Uh, if a credit spread goes against you, how do you mitigate the, uh, the damage? Um, uh, Andrea, basically what you do is if you're, if you're buying or if you're selling one uh, uh, strike price, which is the money you put in your pocket, then you're buying the next lower one so that it, you might, so now you, and, and I'm, let me see if I can do this, explain it. Let's say you're doing a credit spread on a $50 uh, stock and you were selling the puts. You were selling the puts, which were at $2 and I'm on the 50s. And then you buy the 55 puts. Maybe you buy them for 40 cents. So instead of putting $2 in your pocket, you're netting $1.60. So if that stock stays above 50 or goes above 50 and stays above that, you put that $1.60 in your pocket. So, and it might be that the stock is already trading at 52 and you, you've uh, uh, sold the 50 puts, put that money in your pocket, and you bought back the 45 puts for 40 cents. So you've put, instead of $2 in your pocket, $1.60 in your pocket. With the probabilities that that price of that stock is going higher, so that on expiration day is still selling well above above 50, so you keep that dollar 60. But let's say all of a sudden they come out with an announcement and it drops that stock 40 points or 30 points, some big number. Well, at least you were protected that you now your maximum loss would be. Three dollars and forty cents because you put a dollar sixty in your pocket, and if it went down below forty-five, the forty-five puts would be going up. So your net, your your loss would be five dollars minus the dollar sixty you put in your pocket. So that's your kind of your protection from getting slammed on a on a a, a real big loss. But that's why you try to do it that why. Well, to that last week of uh, going into expiration, because that's less time for something huge negative going against you. Risk of assignment considerations when you're selling credit spreads. Mike, I've never had anything assigned to me on a, a credit spread. And I don't know if there's some sort of mechanism at the brokerage firms that say this is a spread versus a, an outright uh, sale. I think you probably have more of an opportunity to have something assigned to you if you just sold or went short of position naked uh, versus having it covered on a spread basis. If you're buying just call, will you buy at the money or spend less? by out of the money close to anticipated move. No, if you're buying out of the money close to the anticipated move, that means you're not going to make very much money. So if you're buying, if you think the stock is going to move to $55, there's no sense buying the 55s because you're not going to make any money. So I want to sell the 55s because that's where my anticipated move is and, and buy the 50s. So spread itself don't have advantage. All depends on market analysis. Uh, no, the spreads do have an advantage, but that's after your market analysis. So you want to first do your market analysis to know which way your price is going, and then your spread gives you much more advantages than just buying calls outright or buying puts outright. Um, how often do uh, I am thinking uh, that the uh, they're going to have uh, because of the number of stocks that they follow based upon my uh, formulas that you'll have there'll be constant uh, 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 trade setups. Yeah, the further you go out of the money, the higher the lower the probability of making money with it. 
because that price has to move up to that level and exceed it for your option to make making money. The formula for TC2000 on green flag does not work. Uh, John, email that to me. Steve at Candlestick Forum. I'll make sure whoever has it, uh, we get that corrected. Where will this be housed to go back and watch so I can watch over and over and over and see? Oh, uh, Rick, there will be a... Uh, There will be a uh, recording of this. Jim's just not here. He's recording it. Uh, uh, I'll say not offline, but he's he's not at his desk recording. He's at his investment meeting. Uh, when will you close the spread? Is it when the price reaches the target? Uh, no. When you again, it all comes down to math. If the price all of a sudden moves well above, sometimes your price will get. Let's say you paid a dollar twenty for that spread, and then over the next three days, the stock price moved up dramatically, and your spread now instead of being worth a dollar twenty is worth. I'm going to pick out a number four sixty. But you still have, uh, oh, let's say, let's say you bought it two and a half weeks before expiration, uh, and all of a sudden it went up to 460. So your risk reward factor is you've already gone from a dollar twenty to 460, and if you held on to it for another two and a half weeks, you'd make another 40 cents. That might not be worth the uh, risk for holding it for that amount. So usually I close it out, out and we'll move on to another one that makes more sense math-wise. Why not buy in the money and sell at the money options? Uh, Ilman, it's still a function of what, what, uh, what options make the most sense math-wise. Do you buy back the one you sold and keep the one you bought? Not necessarily unless there's some very compelling reason that that's going to continue much higher uh, above our expectations. Um, you cut your losses. Do you lose on spreads occasionally? Oh, definitely. But your losses are smaller because your uh, m money at risk are, is smaller. Um, so instead of going in with a two dollar and seventy five cent uh, price, you may only be going in at a dollar twenty. Uh, your the amount of money exposed is much less. So once again, the spread, the the math on the spread is that your your upside percentage returns are much greater. Your downside risk is smaller because you have less money in, or you have less money exposed, and your break even is lower because you're You've got less money exposed. Okay. Um, is this something that is a different price than the full membership I just bought? Uh, yes, this is a trading execution system, whereas the uh, chat room in the options room is uh, members of the Candlestick Forum that are trading options are throwing ideas back and forth. Um, guys, the nearest strike price is the long. Yeah, they, you can't be assigned. Uh, um, yeah, thank you, Don. All right. Yes, and you can use any strategy you want to, uh, James, uh, as long as the, uh, yeah, whatever strategy works. Remember, whatever strategy you put on is is based upon the underlying analysis of the uh, charts. That is the first criteria. A lot of people uh, will ask, "What do you do on the uh, on analyzing chart? Uh, what what criteria do you use first? And the first criteria of any analysis is what is the candlestick signal telling me? 
and then how do the confirming how does the confirming indicators uh, look? Then if I'm going to buy that position, I can either buy the stock or I can buy the option. And if I'm going to buy the option, now I have to do a next step, which is what option trade makes the most sense risk reward factor wise to be in that trade. It costs three times as much. I don't know. My my option trades don't seem to be very expensive. That I don't know, uh, JS. What how many trades we be looking at? What if stock moves immediately after you've placed the spread? Do we still make a profit at time decay is not yet happened? Not necessarily. If it moves immediately, or if it moves in the right direction, usually the uh, out of the money until it gets to that higher price of the out of the money call area, your at the money uh, option price is usually going to move a little bit better percentage wise. What's the price of the stock? Oh, John, I don't understand that one. Um, Oh, uh, basically what we've done is we've taken my option, not my options trading, my chart analysis techniques, and we've hired a professional trading group that takes my trade setups, and then they apply the best option strategies to go with those those trade setups. So. If you're trading options, it's giving you immediate uh, instructions on how to to uh, buy or what the best option strategy is and how to implement it. They don't implement the trades for you. They just send you an email or I don't know whether they have phone notice uh, to say, all right, you want to buy. This is the this is how you want to word your buy or your structure your buy. So it has the uh, option trade set up for you so that if you're trading at any other uh, trading area or trading uh, uh, execution spot, you can tell them exactly how to set up the, set up the trade. Let's see. But don't you think if you were averaging 80% winners, better to do directionals? And spreads now because every time a, a price does not uh, uh, just because a price is moving and that's where a lot of people lose money they say oh this stock is going up I'm going to buy the calls well that may not be the best trade setup because those calls maybe have been too expensive uh, for making money on that trade that's why spreads are more effective and uh, uh, for the people in the option or in the option trading room, uh, we'll we'll do a, a, a staggered spread setup. And a staggered spread is where we have a good idea that a price is going to move in a certain direction. So we're buying the one set of calls maybe in the morning, and then selling the other set of calls, which are now priced higher at the end of the day after the price has moved. So where we might have had in a situation where our cost of that spread, if we bought it in the morning, was two dollars, well, if we bought the fifties uh, in the morning and sold the fifty-fives in the afternoon, maybe that two-dollar spread that we would have bought in the morning is now a net of a dollar twenty. Um, so our leverage again is that much greater. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Is that Becky? Is there some reason why they can't get get in? If that's the problem, we will make sure you get the right link first thing in the morning. Um, 
Olivia, that I don't know too. The, the trades come out to you on email, or uh, I don't know whether they've got it set up to come out on your all the phone apps. Um, and the frequency, we're not sure of. It's always based upon the conditions of the markets. Uh, uh, I will find out when those uh, trades start uh, coming, Sandy. Um, never heard or thought of that staggered spread. Uh, Helen, I've made a very, very good money with the staggered spread because we have one basic advantage using candlestick signals. We can see where there's a high probability of a trade moving higher where we can be buying one set of calls in the morning and selling the other set of calls at a higher price. So, uh, all right, then let me, uh, again, the reason we're kind of pushing these strategies is that a lot of people are taught option strategies, but they then try to use the option strategies for, for everything, those option strategies that they learned. Whereas what we're trying to do is teach everybody the simple option strategies and then know how to apply it to the correct uh, chart pattern. Okay, let me take a gander here at the, uh, so here's what our uh, market looks like. We're still in this wedge formation. And we knew once they bounced off the bottom that more than likely they were going to come back up toward the top of the trend or the wedge formation. So it still implies that we've got a couple more days to the upside to reach this level. Then we have to see whether they can break it out or not. And that's why when people always ask me, uh, where's your upside potential on something, I say, watch to see what it does at a specific level, whether it's a resistance level, um, uh, whether it's a, uh, a trend line, anything that we can watch to see what's happening here based upon the type of signal. Uh, that is, is occurring at that level. So this implies that we're still coming up to the top of this uh, wedge formation, but the stronger of the uh, indexes right now is the, the NASDAQ, which has had the left-right combo right off the 50-day moving average, the doji sandwich above the T-line. And what do we know about the doji sandwich? That there's usually more upside. And notice what the uh, NASDAQ did today. They even came back down one more time and used the T-line as support and took it back up. So this is still an implication that investor sentiment is still bullish. We just have to watch what it does once it gets to specific uh, uh, resistance levels. Now, crude oil prices, let's see, let's go back to the crude oil prices, as we can see, is still in a slow uptrend, and it's pulled back right exactly where we'd expect it to pull back to. Anytime we break out through a resistance level, they'll come back and see if it's going to act as support. We did kind of a little inverted hammer doji. If they open this positive and trade positive, that pretty much tells us this uptrending channel is still in progress. And that's going to make some of our oil stocks, like whiting, that we've been buying in uh, short-term accounts as well as long-term accounts, if it breaks through the 50, your next target is coming up here to fill the gap. So there's still upside to this one. Uh, you signed up yesterday for which service uh, you Oh, is it coming in? You, yeah, check your spam folders and make sure that they stay out of the spam folders. Uh, can you show us a specific bar at which you decide to place an option spread? Not necessarily a specific bar, but what pattern? Now, on this one, let me find uh, oh, cyber, for example. And the reason I use that is because we can see what the pattern is. We can see we have a fry pan bottom. It hasn't even been able to close below the 3T line, let alone the T line. 
So I know that we've got tomorrow and till next Friday another five, six trading days that if it broke out through here, we could be up in this range over the next five or six days. So I could look at this as a uh, potential move, or I could even go out further and say, I'm going to buy the 65s and sell the 70s. That's a high risk, but that would also be a very extremely high return. So I'm basing my, uh, my strategies on two factors. What is the underlying stock chart telling me? And what is the math on a trade that tells me this would be the, uh, uh, a very good uh, risk reward factor? Will the recording be available? Yes. Um, Uh, Jarek, no, there won't be too many people. We're any probably the strategies they're going to be working on are Amazon, Apple, Netflix, those type of trades where coming in for uh, maybe four or five hundred options at one time is not going to make a wrinkle in the move. Uh, yes, Achilles, there. I will get to uh, uh, Pier One today. Um, what type of spread would you do and at what strike prices? I'd probably be doing a debit spread right or a debit spread at this point still. Um, next week, I might look at the puts to see if it's uh, uh, best to do the credit credit spreads, anticipating that if it keeps confirming that maybe a, uh, a 60, 65 credit spread, putting that in your pocket is still very viable if we're still heading in this direction. Uh, Hank, that I don't know. I think it's still a function of what are good trades based upon the market conditions. Um, so that uh, I'll have to find out the details on that. Do futures options different from stock options? Uh, I don't know, Leo. As far as I've never, uh, I don't trade the uh, options on futures because I always make good money just trading the futures themselves. How do you know whether to do a credit or debit spread? Again, the time factor. If this is two or three weeks before expiration, I'm still doing a credit spread. If it's in the week of expiration, um, I'm doing a, uh, a credit spread. Uh, Ravi, hold on to your individual stocks uh, picks. Um, when I don't even think Jim can do the double line, if he can, uh, that's when you put in your individual stick, uh, requests. Let me go through a few that still look good. Uh, uh, oh, let me do the, uh, let's see, we did crude oil. Crude oil, uh, again, is in this uptrending channel. It hasn't been able to close back below the 50 or the T-line. If it starts moving up after this little inverted hammer, that tells me that this trend is still an up, upward trend making the oil stocks. And our oil stocks right now are SN. Let's make this bigger. Uptrend. Uh, CPE. We're holding in an uptrend coming out of this scoop pattern. Uh, what is it, LPI, coming out of the fry pan bottom. If this opens higher tomorrow, basically what do we have? We have our fry pan bottom, J-hook pattern, which means our next target is the 200-day moving average. Is that the 50 SMA? Yeah, the blue line is the 50 SMA, simple moving average. The gray line is the 20, and the red line is the 200 simple moving average. They're on all our charts because every money manager around the world uses those to make their decisions of when to be buying and selling. We can see exactly what's happening uh, at those points. Uh, okay, JC, yes. And, and that's the nice thing about our options room is we've got people in there that are very helpful as far as telling you which uh, 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 which uh, what strategies they have set up and why. Um, um, 
how do I send private messages on this platform? I think there's a way you click on the name and then you send a private message. Isn't the T-Line an important, and T-Line is our important factor, but it's also, it's our number one factor, yes, but it also uses the other moving averages as telling you where your targets are or giving you added confirmation. Um, uh, yes, uh, MB, the green flag, that, that uh, promo, or opening it back up to everybody, I may have jumped the gun. That may be something they're sending out tomorrow. Who does the options? Who does the options? They all do. I mean, this is an options trading room where we've got a bunch of good traders that have different strategies and willing to just explain what their strategies are. Uh, vertical spread and the debit spread are the, they're, they're apples and oranges. The vertical spread is is uh, buying one call and selling another call or buying one put and selling another put. Um, a debit uh, debit spread is whether when you do that spread, depending on which one you buy and sell, if you have to pay money out of your pocket to put on that spread, that's a debit spread. If when you do that spread, you immediately put money in your in your pocket and hope that everything expires worthless so that you keep that money in your pocket, that's a credit spread. When would you use a straddle? A straddle is for something more non-directional or that, uh, if so, and we don't trade non-directional. Usually our, uh, our charts are telling us which way things are moving. Um, what return risk are you looking for from your credit put spreads? No, no uh, return. It's, as I say, it's a, usually a little money percentage-wise, but the, the risk reward, the risk factor is very small, and the uh, probabilities of making money are very, very big. All right, let me uh, get to a few more here. Uh, we've been in MM, FMM, bleh, FMSA because it had the scoop pattern, and today it started breaking to the upside. You want to be buying this one on positive trading because now this becomes a J-hook type pattern. And what do we expect coming out of a scoop pattern, a very strong price move? So this is still very viable as far as a buy, because if this is wave one, wave three should be the same magnitude. We were buying both the stock and the calls on Pier 1 today, because here's your best friend. And we call this your best friend, because anytime you see a doji gap up, especially coming out of the oversold area, not only are your probabilities that you're going to be in an uptrend, but your probabilities of that being a very strong uptrend is great. So all boats rise in a rising tide. We just have uh, uh, signals and patterns that show you when that, that rising boat is going to rise a lot faster than the overall tide. This one can still be bought on positive trading tomorrow because of this signal right here, this doji gap up. I wouldn't be surprised that you see another move like this which basically tells you you can come all the way up here to the $17 area pretty quick, filling that gap. Yeah, they reported earnings. Let's see, we did the oils. Uh, Whiting was another oil company that we've been buying both long-term and short-term because when they gapped this down on the new stock offering after it was in an uptrend, usually it takes a while for it to settle down, and then it continues its uptrends. Right now, we're anticipating it coming back up and filling that gap, especially if it gets through the 50-day uh, uh, moving average. Do you look for unusual option activity? I don't, but some of the people we've had on here, and we have people in the options room that belong to all different sorts of services because that way, if they see something from a service that shows option activity or uh, other indicators that those people are showing, then we can apply it to the candlestick charts to see if there's something confirming or that it is confirming. Uh, John, very rarely do I do deep in the money uh, directional uh, credit spreads, only because I don't usually look at them at deep in the money. But that doesn't mean they aren't viable. Uh, and that's why uh, we're getting other uh, professional traders to do our trading 
because I don't. My uh, trading system has been what is the uh, most simple, common sense uh, trading strategy that I want to do on this particular trade, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time trying to analyze it and figuring out which uh, way to set it up. That's why we've hired other people to do that for us. Yes, the uh, Kiss system. Um, Uh, Brad, on the uh, Pier One, I'm I'm buying the uh, March calls right now, which I usually don't do, but I figure there could be a very strong move on this move up, and it might take uh, three, four weeks. Um, so I I bought the March calls. Our ADXS is another one again of our classic price move coming out of the fry pan bottom. You now there's another little fry pan bottom breakout. Notice how it broke out with the doji sandwich and notice what it hasn't been able to do this whole time close back below the t-line so we stay long notice we're moving a little bit away from the t-line right now which means we have our safety stop at today's open it shouldn't come back down through that level uh, did I say March calls yeah I meant May calls yes did I say March? Yeah, March is gone. It was such a fun, fun month. How do you decide the time frame of options? Still comes back down to which ones make the most sense. <laughs> You're still stuck in February. Yeah, still paying the bills from December. So ADA, uh, ADXS. This is just based upon the normal classic pattern: fry pan bottom. J hook pattern. Uh, we recommended VHC. Still long on this one because there's your fry pan bottom setting up. Where do we think our likely target is? The 200, which would coincide with this. And once it gets to the 200, we watch to see whether it's going to break out or not. Uh, we're long MBT. Another slow curve fry pan bottom that broke out. And notice where. Our trend kicker. Remember, a trend kicker is the same as a kicker signal. They opened it here and closed here. The next day, they gapped it up and went the opposite direction. And where did they do that? Right at the breakout level of our fry pan bottom. What did that imply? That we're still more upside. And what do we expect coming out of a fry pan bottom? A very strong price move. Um, uh, Helen, if there's one week left on the monthly calls, I do two things. I look to see if there's a spread that is viable for the short term, or I go ahead and buy uh, the next month out. Is this a training session for trading options or random question? Uh, yeah, we're we're past the uh, the uh, options. We're just now doing the uh, our usual analysis. Um, afterwards, uh, John. Yes, I use. Uh, if I'm buying something, if I'm day trading uh, uh, commodities, for example, today I was uh, uh, day trading uh, the dollar because the dollar on a daily basis had our morning star signal right off the 50-day moving average. Closed above the T-line, did a doji sandwich. So I was buying right here based upon the 10-minute chart. Oops. 10-minute chart somewhere down in this area. Started, notice our little J-hook pattern on the 10-minute chart. I stayed long. I took profits here. I bought back in here, took profits here. I bought back in here and then closed out up here. And I was going to buy back if it came back up again. Well, it hasn't come back up up again. So uh, that's the five-minute chart. The ten-minute chart a little bit easier to see. Stayed long, came out up in this area, um, and we'll we'll be ready to buy back because what's my daily chart telling me? But even though it's open lower, we've had a doji sandwich. We've got a double bottom. We came off the 50. We should probably be coming back up to the top of the trend channel. 
is a trend kicker any stronger or weaker than or more predictive than a kicker? Uh, no, it's just uh, uh, telling you that the trend kicker that it's not happening at the bottom of a uh, at a reversal. It's a uh, 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 it's a kicker signal in a trend. It tells you that trend is going to be up uh, further. Yeah, so Olivia, we do this uh, uh, type of webinar every Thursday, open to everybody. And then Monday night, we do it just for the members, um, doing the, kind of the same analysis, but a little bit more heavier on some of the stock stocks that we uh, uh, own uh, and what to do with them. Uh, for example, Fold, right now we're buying because it's doing this slow rounding curve. Next target should be back up to test the high. I hate that thing. And we recommended Depot higher. But notice that it came back down. Used the 20 as a support, came back up. But notice the type of pattern we're in. Again, there's our classic. Fry pan bottom, strong price move. Pull back. There's our left-right combo. There's our uh, doji sandwich. Now we have a doji again with stochastics coming up. Where's our next likely target? At least to test this level. So this would be a situation where I would use uh, a, maybe a, a staggered spread, which means if it opened positive uh, tomorrow, I might be buying, I don't know, whatever. I'm just hypothetically saying maybe maybe buying the 25s. And if it moves up in the manner that we expect it, which would be this same magnitude, that by the end of the day, if it's up here, I might be selling the 2750s against it so that my spread, instead of being maybe two bucks uh, for that trade, may now be $1.20, much better uh, percentage. Can you address my question at 9.06? OK, Maurice. Oh man, 906, Maurice. For any stock, how do you determine the volatility of the underlying in order to decide uh, on the expected move of an option? Uh, I don't determine the volatility on specific stocks. I don't care what the previous volatility was. If you notice this right here, there wasn't very much volatility at all. But look at the move here coming out of that pattern. A lot of people that you hear trading options, they want to trade off of stocks that have good deltas. Well, the delta on this may have gotten flattened out quite a bit because it wasn't trading very active for the last month. So the delta may have been diminished. That had nothing to do with this price move right here. Uh, let's see, was this one a while back? Uh, this isn't what I was looking for, but this is a good example. This wouldn't have had a very wild delta right in here because it was a flat trader. But then look what happened after the kicker signal, our candlestick signal. We had a very strong price move. So the delta had absolutely nothing to do with the next price move. Um, is debit spread trading high? High something options by their na very nature. Oh, repeat that, Don. I uh, implied volatility. Uh, very rarely, Jay, do I close out one leg. If I bought a position based upon what I expected my first analysis to be, I usually will close out the trade if uh, it's working as good or better than I thought and take my profits and go on to something else versus then doing a whole other option strategy that may be half-baked because the price is moving and I want to catch uh, uh, one other side of it. Uh, Richard, I have no average delta. I don't even look at delta. Most of the time, I don't even understand what delta means. 
if I'm looking at a price pattern like this, and again, this was one that uh, we were buying on the breakout that the delta developed in here for the last uh, month has nothing to do with this price move over here. We're trading off a of candlestick charts, which are the uh, graphic depiction of human emotions and in price patterns that have worked for the last 400 years because human emotions don't change. How long did it take you to give up the analysis and really believe in candlestick charts? Jim, it didn't take me very long because when I started analyzing candlestick charts, again, it was back when there was nobody around doing candlesticks. I was looking at some very antiquated chart setups. They weren't even on, candlestick charts weren't even on the computers yet. Um, I would get charts out of California that they would print them up a big chart book on Friday, I'd get them Tuesday. And I'd use my little mechanical pencil to to put the high, low, open, close, and at the end of the week, the right side of my page looked like chicken scratch because that's where I'd been making all these chart, uh, uh, drawing in the chart patterns. But I tell people that there are people, when I was, uh, at that time, I was buying houses, renovating them, and reselling them in Atlanta, Georgia. And so I had my little Quotrex. I had my phone that was attached to the dashboard of the truck. And I know there's people in Atlanta wondering why this full-grown man was crying as he was going down the road because I'd look at my charts at night. I'd be buying lean hogs based on this chart, and I'd say, all right, if it comes back through this level, I need to stop out because the charts say it's going against me. And I'd ride down the road, and I'd look at my quote tracks, and it would keep getting closer and closer to my area that I'm supposed to stop out. And then I'd sit there thinking, oh, man, what if it went through there and then turned right around and went back up? Boy, would I be, that would make me look stupid. And I'd let it go right down through the stop area that I told myself I should stop out. And it'd keep going and keep going, and then it'd be way down, and I'm sitting there thinking, what the heck were you thinking? You analyze the charts, which are based on, common sense investment perspectives of what human nature is doing. If they didn't work, they wouldn't be around for 300, 400 years. And uh, so it didn't take me too long to say, all right. And that's where I started getting my human emotions out of my trade. And I said, just let the chart tell me what the chart is doing. Not too long ago, I can remember when I said, all right, start looking at your uh, crude oil prices, because we just had a big, huge bullish engulfing, and now we're back up above the T line. There were so many people on CNBC News saying, oh, crude oil prices are going down to $30 a barrel or $20 a barrel. And we were starting to buy oil stocks, but we even had people in the chat room say, well, oil prices are going down. We've got oversupply. It doesn't matter what all the statistics or all the opinions are out there. There's only one opinion that you want to listen to, and that's the chart itself. This is the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling, not perspective or anticipation. This is actual decisions of whether people are buying and selling, whether you're looking at the oil chart, whether you're looking at uh, interest rates, bond prices. This is telling you what Everybody's actually doing. Do we think bond prices are, or uh, interest rates are going up and bond prices are going down? doesn't matter what we think. The charts tell us exactly what everybody is doing. Um, uh, Don, yes, and whiting did go down, but that was not based on, that was based on the fact that uh, they came out with a, a uh, a surprise, not a surprise, but they came out with a new stock offering. So it's not a question of, do the charts tell you what the prices are doing? They definitely do. Do they tell you everything that's going to happen? Definitely not. But the charts tell you what to do when things happen. There's times when you're in a position, and there's times when you should be out, or there's times when you say, all right, what's the chart telling me now? so you can revamp your uh, trading strategy. Is every stock or every uh, price that we look at based upon the charts going to go up? 
Definitely not. But the probabilities say that we're in the right trade at the right time, or if a trade is heading down. We're in IX, or IPXL. Notice what started this one. Your best friend, Doji Gap Up. Does that look familiar? Pier 1, your Doji Gap Up. There are expectations of what should happen after we see these signals. And Supon, there's our big bullish uh, uh, piercing signal. This one's your classic. There's your fry pan bottom. There's your strong price move. What's a prerequisite for a J-hook pattern? A strong price move. There's your J-hook pattern. How long do you hold this one? Until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Uh, there's some good-looking charts out there right now. This is a nice breakout, slow curve breakout. Where do you think this one's going? Right here to the 200-day EIOS. Hit the uh, resistance level after this slow curve. Where will we line? And as soon as it comes back up through today's open, uh, we did Pier One, Tazar. Tazar, that slow curve. This is what we call the bobble. Buy signal, where do you think your first target is? The 50-day moving average. What did it do with the 50-day moving average? Sold off. Where do you think everybody was going to take their profits if it hit the 50-day moving average? Then it came back, and then uh, notice what it did. This is what we call the bobble. It couldn't close below the T-line, curled back up. This is where you're buying when it closed back up above the 50. Do we always get moves like this? No, but the probabilities say that if it started trading above the uh, 50, it was breaking out into a J-hook pattern. And we can see very clearly that they couldn't let it go below the T-line, and we had the T-line crunch pushing it back up above the, uh, uh, through the resistance level. BDSI, bullish engulfing signal. Bounced smack dab off the 200, closed above the uh, T-line, broke this downtrending channel. You can be buying this one. The probabilities are that it's got more upside. And Simo, when it came up through, this broke this downtrending channel. That tells you there's a whole new perception of this uh, 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 that stock. Uh, MR, there's your fry pan bottom. There's kind of your uh, doji sandwich setup. Broke through. Big scoop type pattern. Probably more upside. HLX was pointed out in the chat room today. Again, notice what happened. It hit the 50. It pulled back. Indecision. You got a J hook or a fry pan bottom. Now you have a little J hook. Where do you think your next target is? Filling this gap up here. So you know you have more upside. This is just a high probability setup. What is the time EMA on the T-line? The 8 exponential moving average. Uh, Jay, yes. We don't have time for fancy strategies. All we're looking for is what the investor sentiment is telling us is going on in each, uh, each chart situation. Then. We want to put as quick or as easy a trade on as, without having to sit there for hours trying to figure out what to do. You're buying many of these stocks in overbought conditions. Yes, because you've got two situations. One, you have candlestick buy signals that you want to buy, preferably in the overbought uh, uh, or the oversold situation. Then you have patterns that are breaking out usually when your stochastics are in the overbought condition. So AEO had a strong price move. Notice the big fry pan bottom. Where do you want to be buying? On positive trading tomorrow, telling you they broke out. Where are you going to be? Usually when you're breaking out of a pattern, it's usually when investor sentiment has built back up again. Let's see, what else do we got here? 
FBR, there's your classic fry pan bottom, J-hook pattern. Notice how the J-hook started. Your best friend, doji gap up. Where are you? You're still in the overbought condition, but we're not buying stochastics. We're buying the chart patterns. The stochastics only give us an indication of whether we're in the overbought or oversold condition. Again, we're looking for buy signals in the oversold condition. We're looking for patterns that are probably already up in the overbought condition. If you're in a strong uptrend on a stock that's not closing below the T line, you might be in an overbought condition for months. I'm staying long in that overbought condition for months just as long as it doesn't come back and close back below the T line. NDRM, big fry pan bottom, you're right at the uh, breakout level. So there's two very simple things that uh, uh, that happen at this point. It fails and uh, stays lower. You don't get in it. Or if you're in it, you, if it closes below the T-line, you come out of it. If it opens positive, the probabilities are pretty strong. You're not only going to be in an uptrend, but you're going to be in a strong uptrend. And eight, eight did a big, huge belt hold. Now notice how it broke this downtrending channel and started running pretty strong. Now you've done a belt hold. And what's the one thing that you can analyze on this chart? They couldn't close it below the T line. Even though they opened it way down here and closed it up here, they still couldn't close this below the T line. What's that tell you about your uptrend? You're still in an uptrend. What's this candle tell you? It tells you they wiped out a lot of sellers, and more than likely, there's no more sellers in the way that this uptrend will continue because there, there's no sellers in, in the way. Okay, last one is Zoo. Fry pan bottom, and where is the fry pan bottom? Right about where the fry pan bottom started. So if it opens positive tomorrow, What's that basically telling you? That the 50 is not acting as resistance anymore, and it's broken out through here. Where's your next target? Well, they've got a gap to fill all the way up here. So this becomes a very high probability trade. Even though your stochastics are in the overbought area, that's exactly where you're going to have these patterns break out. OK, Jim, I don't know. Can you do the double line? If not, uh, I'll go ahead and. Uh, Take everybody's, we'll do as many of these, oh, it was already 9.30. We'll do a lot of the big ones that everybody's watching. Facebook, right now, Facebook has to open higher and trade higher to stay in it. Otherwise, notice your last signal, big bearish engulfing signal, and you're having a hard time staying up above the T-line. Netflix had a strong day yesterday, which brought it up on a doji sandwich, and notice where it closed today. After it pulled back some, it supported right on the 3T line, which is a three exponential moving average. Makes this very simple. If it opens positive tomorrow, probably at least going up to test the 50-day moving average. Uh, Amazon also has a big fry pan bottom that you can be buying right now, because if they break out through this level, we're probably going to have another wave, the same magnitude as this one. Again, building up of investor sentiment. Uh, Goog. Goog just can't get out of the woods yet. It's still trading below the T-line. Uh, you don't touch Goog until it can get on the long side until it gets back up above the T-line. I think we did fold. Fold is a fry pan bottom. You buy this one on positive trading. All right, let me... Uh, Ah, Becky did the double line. Okay. All right. All right, let me see how many of these I can do so that we don't have people negating the kids that need to be tucked in. Left, right, come, or a bullish engulfing signal, scoop type pattern on GameStop. You can be buying this one. Use the T-line as your stop. Uh, SYMC. 
another one that you can bind. You've got bullish signals in here. Just watch what it does once it gets up here because there you've got this resistance level and these resistance level. Uh, make sure it gets through the uh, those moving averages. If it stalls there, which means if you see a sell signal there, close out and just wait for it to come back up through. Uh, CELG, you've had your inverted hammer, bullish confirmation. Remember, the inverted hammer, if it confirms, you've got probably a 95% probability or greater that you're going to go higher. So if this one opens positive tomorrow, you can be buying immediately uh, because you'll have a doji sandwich which tells you they bottomed out here. Now look for it to go back up to the top of the trend channel. Let's see. Don't hold or not. Eight has not been able to get 11, 12 in the last several years. to 11 or 12, well, we're not buying the last seven, several years. We're buying on what the chart is telling us is happening right now. Wouldn't you have sold eight because it opened below the T-line? Uh, yes, but that's the, also the advantage of our visual uh, aspects of candlesticks. When it opened, what type of candle did it immediately start forming? It started forming a green candle. So what did that tell you immediately? But as soon as it opened, they're buying. When would you have closed it out? Well, if they turned around and came back down through the open, then it closed out. That told you they would just popped it. In this case, they never sold it off. They came right back up again. So a lot of people say, when do you sell? I usually sell within the first minute or two. But if my first minute or two is already starting to show they're buying, I'll wait a little bit and see what they're, they're doing. Uh, And again, that's the, the aspect of uh, the candlestick chart. Is it's going to tell you exactly what's going on minute by minute uh, on what what's going on in that uh, trade. Uh, B uh, Bristol Myers, you can get ready to buy this on positive trading. It has to come up through the T line and close above the T line. You can see obviously the 50-day uh, uh, moving average is acting as support. TRV, travelers, I wouldn't be long or short this one. First of all, the magnitude of movement is very minuscule. And secondly, there is no trend of this. Uh, wouldn't be long or short this one. Prudential, Prudential, same scenario, but it still has a little bit better chart. It has a left-right combo, so it should be coming back up. But again, if it even comes back up to the 200, it's only moved. 6%, 8%, uh, there's probably a lot better uh, situations to be in. Oh, I don't know what, is it Comcast? Is that Comcast? Yeah, Comcast, little scoop type pattern. Notice the inverted hammer, bullish confirmation. You stay long until you see a sell signal. And BRG. Ooh. That one I wouldn't trade at all. There is, uh, oh, it's a REIT. If it pays a good dividend yield, you can stay with it because it's not selling off any. But that would be the only reason I'd be in it is because of the uh, uh, dividend. ACAD, get ready to buy this one on positive trading tomorrow. Uh, another one that uh, is building back up steam. And Fran, I haven't seen Fran in a long time. Made some good money in that. But that's a J-hook pattern. Again, notice your inverted hammer. Bullish confirmation, if it opens positive tomorrow, remember, they're going to move it in the direction of how they open it after a doji. Uh, that tells you that the uh, J-hook pattern is in progress. Tweeter, you just stay long on this one as long as it doesn't close below the, uh, uh, the T-line. LNG, probably wouldn't be long or short this one. There's no direction to it. F-E-Y-E, -E. you can get ready to buy this one on positive trading on a doji sandwich type setup. Notice how when it came up through the 50, it used the 50 twice as support. If it opens positive tomorrow doing a doji sandwich, pretty much tells us that this downtrending channel has been breached. Look for wave three to be in progress.
April 17, $18 calls did not seem to move in a comparison to what the stock did. Can you comment on why this may be happening? Are there some stocks that one should not trade? The options? Oh, I don't know what, on this uh, OIGT, Oh, I don't know the answer to that. It should should have traded unless, oh, uh, it should have moved decently. But you've got to remember, even though this looks like a very powerful chart, it's still, uh, it's still a good chart. Um, it might be that the volume is so low that some days that uh, options don't trade very much at all, so the price doesn't move around very much. Plug. Did a nice little uh, uh, doji gap up. You can be buying this one with your first anticipation being the 50-day moving average. Cypress, Cypress, nothing there yet. It's basing, but you don't do anything on this one until it does close above the uh, the T line. XHT, oops, not coming up over here. And XIV, uh, the short. Uh, VIX, just stay long until you see a sell signal. Baba, Baba has just not had a real good, well, it's now finally broke out. If I was going to buy Baba, I'd put a buy stop at today's open. If it comes back up through there, the bulls are still in control. Uh, I'm going to take it for granted, MP, that, that this is Hill, which is also in a J-hook pattern coming out of the scoop pattern. J-hook pattern. Stay long. Uh, let's see. Did we do Apple? Uh, Apple, I don't, wouldn't do anything with this. You're still in the wedge. I wouldn't do anything with it until it came up to a 128 level, telling you that you broke through this downtrending channel. BRG, did we do that? Yeah, that one I wouldn't be trading. Uh, Rose, uh, yeah, I saw somebody said that they uh, stopped trading sometime during the day and then apparently had some news that popped it. Now, this broke out, but it came way back down, so there's profit taking. Makes this very simple. If it opens positive tomorrow, it tells you the profit taking's over, they're going to take it right back up again. And hog. You had uh, your little doji gap up. You stay long right now until you see a sell signal. Uh, Baba, did we do Baba? Oh, Baba, yes. Buy this on. Um, yeah, uh, uh, I'd buy this if it came back up through the day's open. Olivia, stop losses are very simple with candlesticks. Uh, I always tell people that most people say you set your stop loss 3%, 6%, 12% below where you bought something. The market doesn't give a hoot where you bought it. What will tell you that there's the bull or the bears are in control is if you see something that tells you that you've got a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, so you set your stop loss down here that if it closes below this level, you close it out. It never got there. Um, up here, very simple. You set your stop loss below the uh, T line. If it closes below the T line, you close it out. You pick spots that would tell you that the bears should not be back in this level, or essentially they're in control. AMGN, and we do a whole session on stop losses. Uh, that's part of the membership. That uh, you've got all the uh, videos, training videos on our website. Uh, discounted, obviously, to members. Um, but we also do live trainings at uh, Wednesday nights, Tuesday nights, when we don't have our Monday and Thursday night sessions. We might do a training session on how to do the best scanning, how to set your stop losses, what your best entry and exit strategies are, how to look to take profits, uh, all sorts of elements that you want to know about uh, for investing. but get much better uh, visual clarity when you're using candlestick signals. AMGN, be ready to buy this on a doji sandwich breakout tomorrow because that would tell you this downtrending channel has been breached. 
an INFN just stay long as long as this stays above the T line. Sand disk. It came up through the T line with the doji sandwich. Anytime you see a doji sandwich, it implies there's going to be more upside. If there's more upside, it's telling you it's going to stay above the T line. Right now, you stay long on this one as long as it stays above the T line. BPT did hit the first target, which was the 50 day moving average. As long as this stays above the T line, especially with it paying about a 10% dividend, uh, you want to stay long as long as it stays above the T line. NYGN, that one's not coming up. Zebra, Zebra, notice the left right combo and the doji sandwich breakout. This is in wave three. You stay long as long as it stays above the T line. Micron, you can buy this one on positive trading after the little piercing signals. And new links, get ready to buy this one. If it comes back up, especially if it comes back up through today's open, telling you that wave three is in progress. And Gene. Gene, nothing yet. It can't get up above the T-line. However, if it opens positive tomorrow after Doji Joji inverted hammer, that's when you want to start buying. That tells you that hook is going to start uh, moving. Um, and then you just use the uh, T-line as your stop. TSO, you stay short until you see a buy signal. SM, stay long. Uh, still coming out of this fry pan bottom. I would still anticipate your uh, target's going to be the 200-day moving average. Uh, fold we did. RCPT, right now you stay short until it can get back up above the T-line. But if I was, notice your long-legged doji, and then they started closing it lower the next day, that tells you the bears are, are taking control. Remember, that long-legged doji tells you there's great indecision the next day will tell you what their decision is Ampy, you want to get ready to buy this one on positive trading uh, we did Baba Ampy, you want to buy that because of the doji sandwich breakout um, uh, the green uh, flag service will be uh, all those details should be out in an email to everybody tomorrow uh, the US dollar index Staying long, I am uh, right now long the U.S. dollar based upon Morningstar signal, doji sandwich breakout. I'll be buying some more if it, uh, it's trading a little bit lower tonight, but I'll be buying more if it comes back up through yesterday's uh, close. Rambus. Rambus did a lot of consolidating today, but closed back up above the T-line. If it opens positive tomorrow, you can still be buying this one. Um, and Tesla. Yeah, I usually come into the trading room usually around uh, 11, 12 o'clock Eastern time for about an hour, uh, kind of going over the, what the recommendations were from the night before. And uh, I'll, uh, and then maybe once or twice during the day if I or and I usually put comments in if I'm not in on an oral basis I'm typing comments in and then usually come in around the close to, to show what final things are going on uh, another Tesla broke out through this downtrending channel with your doji gap up you stay long now your next target uh, conceivably is the uh, 200 day moving average. SWKS, you can start buying this one again. This is the exact reason why the Japanese rice traders say let the market tell you what the market is doing. If you watch this stock or if you watch this stock, you can see that the T line has been a factor the whole way up. When it came back, notice your little fry pan bottom started the next move. Now you've come back and came back up. 
which usually means you're going to stay above the 40 or the T line, or you can stay in this as long as the uh, you stay above the T line, anticipating a uh, steady eddy from here. Uh, CTSH, another one that you can be buying on positive trading from here. DT, what is a doji sandwich? I'll get to that uh, next time I see one. BP, you stay long. Uh, kind of a scoop type pattern on NVDA. You can be buying this one or stay long on this one. There's a wee little gap right here to fill. That's your first target. American Express, not a very exciting stock and not even one that I'd be buying right now. Even if it does move, the percentage move is uh, very low. These are what you call institutional traders. They're owned by the institutions. They don't move around with great volatility. Uh, does a belt hold suggest that calls might be worthwhile? Definitely. Remember, the reason we're looking at a belt hold is because it has significant ex expectations afterwards. Uh, Mac, nothing here yet. You don't buy this one until you can see a close above the T line. Uh, Conoco Phillips, you can stay long on this one, but again, an institutional try. Uh, trader pretty much have to watch to see what it does once it gets to this level, which is not too far away from. Uh, again, not a very big uh, percentage mover. And Monsanto, Monsanto, you can be buying same scenario. An institutional trader, as long as it stays above the T line, you can stay long. Uh, all right, should see. We should have had most of them. Baby, I haven't seen Baby in a while. Baby, all you can do with this one is stay long. Notice you got the scoop type pattern. Remember, these scoop type patterns are significant because that's a uh, measure of human nature. That's why we went long on FMSA scoop pattern. We stay long as long as we don't see a sell signal. And CNC, I think this is a bad quote. This is just a steady eddy. You just stay long as long as this one doesn't close below the T line. Yeah, if you're staying long, I wouldn't be buying it, but if I owned it, I'd just continue to hold it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Greg, don't know which one. Um, do you look the day chart two before you put the trade? Uh, yeah, usually the daily chart is my my criteria. I'm a swing trader, so most of my trades are going to last two to ten trading days. So I'm trading off the daily charts. If I'm trading uh, soybeans or the dollar, I'm usually using the 10-minute chart as my bellwether. But I'll look at the daily chart to see which way I should be trading the 10-minute chart, whether it's a bullish. I, mean, I think the daily chart is in a bullish uptrend or bearish. At least I know if I see... Uh, bullish uh, signals or patterns on my 10-minute chart I want to be buying. If I happen to go short during the day because I see a tremendous sell signal, I'm still aware that the uh, overall trend is up so that my I'm a little bit more nimble coming out of my uh, uh, short uh, positions. TGTX, I want to see something more here. Uh, you couldn't close above the T line yet. Yeah, you, I wouldn't be uh, long right now. This is a perfect case where if you bought it on positive trading today, you closed it out with a closing back below the T-line. You could always buy it back, but when they close below the T-line, the probabilities are that it's not in a bullish uh, trend. RBK, is that the right one? S dot R B K. Uh, A M. GN, uh, buy this on positive trading, your doji sandwich. A doji sandwich is a bullish candle and a doji. And then we know the simple rule of doji. It will move in the direction of how they open it. If it opens positive, usually this day right here will be the same magnitude as this day right here. Thus the uh, doji in the middle looking like a doji sandwich. 
Uh, you stay long on, oh, oh that was CY, CYPR. Yep. Are you looking at CYBR? We're staying long on this one. Do you trade ETFs? Uh, if I had big, huge money, yes, I'd trade ETFs. Or if I wanted to stay away from the individual stock, uh, uh, stock. But usually, uh, if I'm trading an ETF, I want to find out which stocks in that that sector are moving the best, and I'll trade those stocks. Uh, chart a large cap. That's stronger than bear's breath. But notice how it's gapped up. At this point, I'd put a stop at today's open because uh, if it comes back down there, the profit taking has started. Uh, LB, all you can do on this one is stay long as long as it stays above the T line. Nothing that I'd get excited about. Uh, Slumburger, another one where you stay long. Watch to see what it does once it breaks out, if it breaks out through this level. Is there a chat room trial? Uh, Jerry, if you will email Abraham at Candlestick Forum, uh, he can give you details on how to get a, a trial. Chesapeake, stay long on this one, anticipating the 50-day uh, being the uh, next target. Yahoo, Yahoo could be doing a doji sandwich. If it opened positive tomorrow, there's a gap to fill right here, which means this candle and this candle could be about the same. Dang. Uh, this one, if it opens lower, it's going to come back and test the T line. If it trades above, so this is where I'd put a buy stop, just above today's high. Because if it comes up through there, that's telling you this whole area is being broken out on a J hook pattern, making your next target the 200 day moving average. An ion. That one's not working. Did I do something wrong? Oops. WFC, Wells Fargo. Right now, it wouldn't be long or short this one. No direction to it. UUP, US dollar, stay long. Stay short. Now, you're right on a support level. Your stochastics in the oversold area. I don't know why we get this little here. If it starts trading positive, if you're short, you cover your short position. If it opens lower, you're now heading down to the 200-day moving average. Did beat P. What scabbers are good for doji? Scanners. Uh, every We've got the scanning on all uh, uh, on trade station. Think or swim, Ninja Trader, MetaStock, uh, TCNet, the scans are all there. The, the, and the uh, formulas for all the uh, signals are on our website uh, over in the left-hand column. Intel, Intel I've never traded because it's an institutional trader and it doesn't have enough movement to it to make it worthwhile. Right now, and yeah, it probably wouldn't be long or short Intel, just nothing there. Do you base your stops on option price or the underlying price? Uh, the options are only a method for buying the stock. So you're basing your buy and sell decisions on what the stock price is doing. If the stock price is showing a sell, then you sell your position in it, whether it's stock or options. Uh, QIHU is one of those where when it broke out, you could be doing a uh, uh, staggered spread by buying here and then at the end of the day selling us the other spread on this level. But notice what it, this did. This is what we call the bobble. Bobble is it came up, failed at the 50, pulled back to the T line, and when it came up through the second time, you want to be buying because not only do you have a J hook pattern, but you've broken out through a resistance level and you usually get a very strong move after that. So again, all we're doing is identifying signals and patterns that have worked consistently for hundreds of years 
that's why we but that's why we have them to look at it because they are patterns that are reoccur. Cores right now, I wouldn't be long or short. You're still stuck in this downtrending channel. And PBR, stay long. Got your fry pan bottom. You broke out through the 50. Let's make this bigger. You just stay long as long as it doesn't close back below the T line. Zyop. You stay short so you see a buy signal. Uh, AFAM, uh, get ready to go short on this one. That's a very good short. Notice your shooting star doji's gap down. That's a strong sell signal. First target, second target, and then there's gaps down here. People often ask, well, don't gaps always get filled? They do. They may not get filled this month this year, next year, but they eventually get filled. So based upon the next pattern or uh, trend, I mean, a doji gap down, that's your best friend to the bearish side. Rite Aid was closed out today because it closed below the T-line. It was coming up off the scoop pattern. You stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Moss. Moss, nothing here yet. Wouldn't be long or short. BMRN, uh, not a real exciting stock, but if it stays, it has to open above the T line. If it opens below the T line or trades below the T line, basically tells you there's no steam left in this one. SBNY. Very slow uptrend. Uh, all you can do is hold this one. Uh, our stochastics, are those blue and red lines, these the only ones you use? Yes. These, these are 12, 3, 3 of the, of the stochastics. Oh, this is not a 15-minute chart. This is just a, on stocks. This service has a 15-minute delay. I don't use this uh, chart for buying stocks. I use this chart for trading options. So, no, they're not. Uh, this is not a 15-minute chart. This is a daily chart. This is just showing that the service has the charts on here delayed by 15 minutes. SCLN, just stay long on this one, as long as it stays above the T line. EWH. Oh, is this Hong Kong? Another one where you put your stop now below today's open. It shouldn't come back below that level. Uh, Wes, I don't know what that one was. Uh, what about a free chat, month chat for your chat room? Again, email Abraham at candlestickforum.com. He'll give you the details. Um, all right, uh, Mark, we will do a whole session. I'll see if I can get... Uh, Hubert to come back and do a again another uh, training session on how to use all the uh, uh, the indicators. The T line is the black line. This is the eight exponential moving average. The three T line is the uh, little green line. The three T line becomes more effective when you start moving too far away from the T line. And Tiffany. All you can do right now is stay long on this one as long as it stays above the T-line. And BlackRock, BlackRock, you know you're in an uptrend, not a very big percentage move, but more than likely it's going to move back up to the top of this wedge. You can see you've got a wedge formation. I'd look for it to come up here and then see what it does at that, that point. And BIDA. BIDA. There's a potential of a doji sandwich. If it opens positive, it means it's going through the 50. Then it means your next target is the 200-day moving average. Uh, we did AFAM. Uh, Goldman Sachs broke out into new high territory. You stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. ZTS, nothing here to get real excited about. Uh, yeah, sideways. 
you need I'd be I'd be trading something else. Panel. Another one you can stay long, but not a very exciting mover. Um, if I was buying this one, I'd rather pay 150 for it, knowing it broke out to the upside. Q R V O. Uh, nothing exciting here either. Um, apparently, a fairly new offering. I wouldn't be buying this one until you see it get back up above the T line. And con, stay long. Notice how the 50 didn't got the T line crunched, pushed it right up through the uh, 50 or through the 200. Tells you there's more upside. VA, nothing here. Stay short until you see a buy signal and a close above the T line. Lock. Lock, you can stay long, but I'd rather pay for it up in here, knowing that it finally swung up off the uh, T line. Right now, this whole chart looks more like a fry pan bottom. You need to wait for the breakout. And OPK, nothing's going to happen here until it does hit the 50, and then watch to see if you get a strong buy signal from that level which is what happened on LRN, came all the way back to the 50, and then you had your strong buy signal. You stay long on this one. How do we identify institutional trading stocks? Are they big? Yeah, the big blue chips. Things that don't move around very much, that are mostly bought by the institutions, Monsanto's, uh, 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 Apple's, Apple trades a lot, but uh, uh, DuPont. All those big old names, they're, they're institutional traders. Uh, if not a buy, because that means the uptrend is not over, uh, it doesn't mean it's time to sell. I just wouldn't be buying it there, but I'd be holding it because it is still in a good uptrend. Uh, Yahoo, we did. Yahoo, if it opens positive tomorrow, you can be buying it on the breakout. The T line is the eight exponential moving average. Called the T line is the trigger line. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal close back below the T line. Under Armour, J hook pattern, more than likely it's going to the top of the trend channel. So watch to see what it does once it gets up here because that's where everybody else would be watching it. I am a pirate fan, yes. Yeah, Achilles, what is that? Um, pinnacle, after the gap up, we're at a 45 degree. You stay long until you see us sell or close below the T line. And CUDA, CUDA broke out. You can see the little slow curve. You, there's your morning star signal. You stay long on this one until you see a sell signal. Let's see, H E D J. Slow curve. This is a, a one of the uh, funds. You stay long on this one as long as it stays above the T line. You're just now breaking out of that slow curve J hook pattern. The T line on the Wave Pro you should be. Uh, yeah, it should be on there already set up for you. ORBK, scoop type pattern. You can buy this one on positive trading. At this point, I wouldn't want to see it trade back below today's low. That would tell you they didn't break out to the upside. Corning, Corning, nothing yet. You've got a morning star signal, but you don't have the bullish confirmation yet uh, above the uh, T line. We did QU. Or Q U I H U, just stay long. This is coming out of the J hook bobble. Still anticipate going to the 200 day moving average. Uh, that was a good place to retire. Um, all right, Clint. Uh, uh, if you like a trade, let's say you wanted to buy Q I H U. Where's the logical spot to tell you the bulls are back in control? I'd put a buy stop. When you go to bed tonight, you put a buy stop at where it opened, which was 
38, you put a buy stop at 6140. If it comes up through there, it stops you in and you're in the trade. UNG, stay short so you see a buy signal. That's the natural gas. Uh, AT&T, this is the uh, epitome of the institutional trader. I wouldn't trade it because the magnitude of movement is so very low, plus there's no, uh, there's no movement or there's no direction right now on uh, AT&T. Whoops, G-I-L-D. Guild. Guild has a nice little scoop pattern. Makes this very simple. If it opens positive, it's confirming the scoop pattern and telling you the uh, 50 is not acting as resistance and also telling you this downtrending channel is not acting as resistance. You want to be a buyer. Walmart, nothing here. It wouldn't be long or short. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be trading this one at all. Uh, I don't trade Forex. I trade the uh, Forex is just a combination of two uh, currencies. I'd rather just trade the currency straight out. Uh, Jarek, there is the scans. Uh, you'll have to hunt around for them or that's a good question to ask in the chat rooms during the day or in our chat room is how do you find those scans. And we got enough people in the chat rooms like Ed C that if you need a scan for whatever uh, software you're trading, he can write it up for you. Um, uh, Rich, that I don't know whether we're doing options uh, house or monster or trade monster yet. Uh, I don't trade penny stocks, Greg, because usually my positions are big enough that I can't trade the penny stocks. I usually have to trade stocks that have a uh, oh, very uh, a very good volume to get in and out. Uh, Joseph, I'll try to find a left-right combo somewhere. QUNR broke out, pulled back, did a bearish engulfing signal, but it didn't close below the T-line. You stay long, just don't let it close below the T-line. And MPEL, another one, you stay long. Notice how it gapped up through the resistance level. Look for it to go to the, at least the 200-day moving average. All the stocks you've discussed, would you trade options if the math is good? Uh, yeah, if, it's, if I see something that I really like, in this case I really liked uh, uh, Pier 1 and because it was moving so fast I just bought calls in the, Mar or the May options. Uh, tomorrow or tonight I might look to see if there's an option spread. Probably not on this price stock that would be feasible, but if this was a $50 stock, it might be better uh, uh, a better option spread to do. GLD, still trading back below the T-line, uh, so the gold trust is now starting to back off. Don't trade Microsoft, it's the one also the epitome of uh, uh, institutional trader. Just doesn't have the magnitude to move, number one, and doesn't have a chart pattern that I'd want to be trading. AMBA does have a nice chart pattern. You stay long on this. Notice how when it came out of the scoop pattern, had this nice slingshot effect to the upside. Add a J-hook pattern. Now you've got the slow curve. You can still be buying AMBA on a positive trade tomorrow. Monster. Nothing. Flat as a pancake. I'd be someplace else. Which way is Philip Morris heading. You can be buying this one, again, an institutional trader, but the first likely target is going to be back up to the uh, T-line. Oh, I think we're in overtime. All right. We'll just keep cranking out until either I fall over or you fall over. Uh, Goldman, as long as Goldman stays above the uh, T-line, that tells you the markets are probably going to be in a good stable uptrend. Fold, I'd be buying this one on positive trading. Let's see, real small, there's your left-right combo right here, a doji followed by a little bullish engulfing signal. Here's a hammer, bullish engulfing signal, left-right combo. Left-right combo is a 
Doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. Do you use market orders or stops on options? Usually I, well, usually use stops. If I see the they're bidding a dollar twenty, asking a dollar forty, I may go in at a dollar thirty and set it there. So uh, unless I really see uh, if if there if an option is trading at six dollars and twenty cents and six dollars and thirty cents. I'll just do it at the market because that that spread isn't anything to get uh, concerned about. Uh, thank you, Joseph. It's, the gray line is the 20-day simple moving average. The T line is the eight exponential moving average. You put it on your charts just the same way you would any other uh, any other moving average. Usually, when they ask you what moving average you want to put on. They'll ask whether you want it simple or exponential. U.S. Steel, also a very nice J-hook type pattern. You can be buying, oh, that's fold. I wonder, that's, uh, I thought we had U.S. Steel up here. U.S. Steel, that's sideways. Now, you do have a bullish engulfing signal, so you can be buying this one with the anticipation that if you break out through this level, you're still in an uptrend. Uh, so you can be buying this one. Yelp, nothing here until they can get it up above the 50. If I was going to buy this one, today's high was 48.10. I'd put a buy stop at 48.20. If it comes up through there after this little inverted hammer type signal, it tells you they're, they're taking it uh, up further. First solar, nothing. If I own this one, I'd close it out. Then I'd put a buy stop at 50 or 62.70. If it came up through there, we knew it was breaking out. Uh, Boeing, Boeing, you can get ready to buy if it breaks this down trending channel. There's your left-right combo: Doji bullish engulfing signal, followed with that bullish engulfing signal closing back up above the uh, T line. And mankind, nothing here yet. Now you do have the potential of a Doji. Sandwich, again, a bullish candle after a little left-right combo. If it opens positive, you can be buying it. That tells you they've broken out through the uh, T-line, making this target your next target. But there's a gap to fill right up here, which would also probably coincide with your 200-day moving average. Let's see. I think we did NVGN. Uh, maybe we didn't. Uh, this one. If you own it, you stay long. This is what you expect coming out of these uh, kind of convoluted fry pan bottom. If you're looking to buy it, you put your buy stop at today's open because if it comes back up through there, the profit taking's over. You hate Bill Mazaroski? No way. He's an idol. 1960 home run. Uh, URI, United Rentals, fry pan bottom. You stay long on this one. Okay, let's call it a night. We're way past everybody's bedtime. Um, yes. All right, everybody get a good night's sleep. If you, uh, yeah, if, you if you need a trial to the to the uh, uh, website, again, we've got the chat room all day long. We do Monday and Thursday nights trainings. Uh, we try to do a special training at least once a week. I think we did one the other night on something. I can't remember. Oh, we did a uh, the advanced patterns uh, the other night. Um, so anyways, remember, all this is just pure common sense. Candlesticks work. The only thing is you have to learn how to use them uh, uh, use them correctly. So with that, everybody have a good evening. We'll see you in the chat rooms bright and early tomorrow.